Hello, everyone. I'm Lana Zak. Thank you so much for joining me. We begin in the Middle East with the escalation of violence between Israel and Hamas. Friday marked the worst single day for Palestinian fatalities, according to the U.N. Israel is continuing retaliatory airstrikes on Gaza for the seventh day in response to Hamas's firing of rockets into Israel. Israel's Iron Dome defense system has proven largely effective against those rockets, but not entirely. Israeli defense forces say at least eight Israelis have been killed by Hamas rockets in the past week, two of them children. The Palestinian Ministry of Health says that the new violence killed at least 42 people in Gaza overnight. That brings the total to more than 180, including at least 50 children. One of the issues at the heart of recent fighting is a looming Israeli Supreme Court decision on an eviction order that's threatening six Palestinian families. They live in the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah. Under Israeli law, Jews can reclaim land that their families owned and fled prior to the 1948 independence war. There is no similar legal path for the descendants of hundreds of thousands of Palestinians who also abandoned their homes during the same period. As CBS News foreign correspondent Imtiaz Tayab reports, the recent flare-up of military violence is also sparking civil unrest between Arabs and Jews across Israel. Israel's bombardment of Gaza is only intensifying. Three buildings were flattened this morning in a series of airstrikes killing 23 people. It's the deadliest attack since violence broke out with Hamas nearly a week ago. But the horrors of Gaza took a twist yesterday when Israeli fighter jets destroyed a tower that was home to international media outlets, including the Associated Press and Al Jazeera. Journalists were warned to leave ahead of the strike that's being called an assault on press freedom. Israel says the building was being used by Hamas intelligence, but offered no evidence. Associated Press President Gary Pruitt says they won't be silenced. That building provided the best vantage point for the world to see the events in Gaza. And now that building is destroyed. Israel's strike on the tower came just 20 minutes after Hamas showered rockets over Tel Aviv in an unprecedented attack. One landed in this busy intersection, badly damaging the street and killing one person. Never has a Hamas rocket struck the heart of Tel Aviv quite like this, and never have we seen damage like this either. Diplomatic attempts to contain the conflict in Gaza are underway. But in East Jerusalem, where this all began, Israeli soldiers continued to confront protesters angry at the looming evictions of six Palestinian families by Jewish settlers. Muna Jurd, who could lose her home, says it's time for this catastrophe to stop. It's hard to imagine there are potentially more serious problems unfolding amidst all this unrest. But across Israel, in mixed Arab and Jewish cities, there's been several nights of horrific neighbor versus neighbor sectarian violence not seen for decades. It's yet another complex issue for a country that's also politically paralyzed. After four elections in just two years, Israel's political parties remain unable to form a lasting government. And the fear now is without any unifying leadership, things could spiral out of control. MTS Tayab reporting. Mohammed El Kurd is a Palestinian writer who has been speaking out against the forced eviction of Palestinians by Israel. He joins me now from Jerusalem. And we also want to mention that CBSN reached out to the Israeli government several times to join us or to provide a comment, but we did not hear back. Uh, Mohammed, thanks for being here. I'm hoping, can you tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you're trying to raise awareness about the plight of the Palestinians in your hometown? Absolutely. Thank you, Lana, for having me. I appreciate being here. I can begin. Um, I'm raising awareness in um, educating and contextualizing so much important key information that has been withheld from people, particularly American audiences. Even now, listening to this report, you said that Palestinians in 1948 abandoned their homes when, in fact, they were forced out by Zionist militias carrying out massacres. This is what happened to my grandmother, who dreamt of going back to her home until she died last year. In Sheikh Jarrah today, we are facing the same threat of ethnic cleansing that we have faced in 1948 and continue to face at the hands of U.S. registered settler organizations colluding with the settler state. Um. It is, it is so difficult to unravel uh, 
part of part of the uh, the long histories of, of um, Arabs and Jews in in that area, um, and certainly when we are talking about the the forced eviction of families in in your neighborhood, um, that is. Forced, and there is a video on social media that appears to show you, in fact, being forcibly removed from your home by Israeli defense forces last week. Tell us what happened, and and where is your family now? Um, thank you again. It's not super difficult to contextualize and speak about a really well documented historic injustice by which people came and subjugated and colonized on other people and took over their homes and villages. It's not complicated whatsoever. What happened in that video is an extension of colonialism where I was forcibly dragged out of my home for simply standing in the street. You know, I've been talking about police brutality since I was a child, but the past two weeks in Jerusalem, in Sheikh Jarrah, have been even astonishing even to me to see the level of vindictiveness and sinister at the hands of the Israeli occupation forces and the way they, they treat us. They have broken somebody's leg. They have broken the garden of somebody. They have um, thrown at us punk water, tear gas. Yesterday, the, the street was so dark, and we were just standing there. In a minute, the entire street illuminated with stun grenades. Um, the level of force is unprecedented, but not really unprecedented for this state that is known for using brute force and shooting to kill Palestinians. Uh, and, and how is your family now? My family is still awaiting um, the... My family is still awaiting the, the trial and what comes of the trial and what can happen. Um, And we're still resisting the Israeli face of Israel and the hands of the states that are complicit with it and allow it to get away with what it does with impunity. Um, Mohammed, help uh, the rest of, of us understand uh, how what's happening in, in Sheikh Jarrah, uh, how that is is. Um, it's been described as the as the spark that has ignited the current conflict, and and what what happens next from here? I think the spark um, of the violence is the violent military occupation that we live under itself. Life for Palestinians in apartheid Israel is unbearable. We are subjugated to police violence, we are subjugated to land theft, we are subjugated to racist laws and a colonial judicial system. The people of Sheikh Jarrah has decided to take a stance against ethnic cleansing, and they were met with brute force. Certainly, we did not spark any violence. The state, which is fascist, that we live under is already violent. Mohammed, um, how do the attitudes among younger Palestinians differ from previous generations? How, um, how is the current situation being viewed by, um, by your elders and also by people that are, that are even younger than you? I think um, social media has allowed us access into people's homes. And we have made a situation that was seemingly presented as this complex situation to be as this very straightforward situation. You have a people subjugating another people. And this, we have been able to kind of trespass the gatekeepers of mainstream media that don't allow us to share our narrative. Um, I think the, few, the older generations are very proud of us, and I think the younger generations are inspired of us. And we are not going to rest until the occupation is ended and until colonialism has ended. Mohammed El Kurd, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.